Yo, what's going on, America's History people? We have chapter 25 for you today. This one is on the birth of the Cold War. Super, super interesting topic. And hopefully you will find this interesting as well. All right, so about containment and a divided global order. So what really are the origins of the Cold War? Well, I want to give you, start off with a question, a quote that I love. Is the enemy of your enemy your friend? or your enemy. Think about that for a second. Pause this video. Think about what do you think the answer is? Because this is what the United States faced during World War II. A major enemy was Germany during World War II, and their enemy was the Soviet Union. So does that make the Soviet Union our friend or our enemy? Started out as a friend. Let's talk about some important conferences. We have Yalta, which is the last meeting of the big three. The big three is Churchill, over there on the left, FDR in the middle, and Stalin on the right. Stalin promised free and unfettered elections in Poland at a later date. Never held true to that. Germany was also divided into four different sections at this conference, and the United Nations, or the UN, the creation of it, was agreed upon. Now, in July and August of 1945, just as the war is about to be over, we have the Potsdam Conference, and Truman replaced FDR at the Potsdam conference and Churchill was out as well. Stalin did not allow for self-determination in Eastern Europe. So the U.S. begins to look at Stalin like, hey, why are you trying to take over all of this Eastern Europe? And Stalin's looking as, you know what? Our country's been invaded twice in the past 150 years. We need a buffer zone. So Stalin seeks to have a buffer zone. Shortly later, Churchill in Missouri gives his famous Iron Curtain speech talking about how Europe is divided between communist and non-communist nations. All right, the containment strategies. There are three issues that concern Truman when it came to the Soviet Union. One, the Soviet Union wanted access to oil in Iran and the Mediterranean through Turkey. Two, there was a civil war going on in Greece. In Greece, we have monarchs versus the Communist Party. Who do you think the U.S. will side with? Yeah, the monarchists. And the Communist Party's increase in popularity as the economy of Europe suffered. So communism seemed pretty appealing to many people in Europe as the economy was bad. So we have this dude, George F. Kennan, lives to be 101 years old, one of the most influential Americans from the 20th century. Holy cow, know them. He is the father of this strategy called containment, which is specifically mentioned in the new curriculum. So he urged the containment of the Soviet Union through counterforce. This is seen through things like the Truman Doctrine, in which the U.S. provided $400 million in aid to Greece and Turkey to resist communism. It would not surprise me at all if you were to see a question at some point. Uh, an excerpt from the Truman Doctrine as a stimulus for your multiple choice questions. And that's an example of using containment. So absolutely know that. We also have the Marshall Plan, which was Secretary of State George Marshall, his proposal to spend $13 billion to help rebuild war-torn Europe. Again, the idea is to make communism less appealing to these countries. The Soviet Union rejected the aid and they were also offered it, and they forbade Eastern European countries from receiving aid as well. Okay, so we have East and West in the New York. There's a Berlin blockade in 1948 in which the Soviet Union shuts off all road and railroad access to Berlin. So the U.S. and its allies respond with the Berlin airlift, round-the-clock airdrops of supplies. This leads to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. This is a peacetime alliance that the U.S. joined. Uh-oh, who would have a problem with that? Yeah, George Washington wouldn't like that. Now, NATO states an attack on one is an attack on all. The Soviet Union, a couple years later, responded with the Warsaw Pact. So let's go down to NSC 68. Start of this bad boy. This is a big turning point in Cold War history. This painted, this report painted the Soviet Union much more starkly than Kennan did when he urged containment. This led to a drastic buildup of the military. President Truman is going to invoke NSC 68 and increase military spending drastic. All right, so in China, we have the communists led by Mao Zedong versus the nationalists led by Jian Jiaxi or Chiang Kai-shek. They are one and the same. Truman, who was supporting the nationalists, eventually cut off aid to Jian Jiaxi and Mao and the communists took control. Now, Truman was blamed for losing China. People said, Truman, if you would have supported Jian more, China would not have become communist. And this is a huge turning point as well because future presidents will do everything they can to make sure a country does not turn communist on their watch. So, Korea, let's jump over the Korean War. 
Korea was divided at the 38th parallel, and the Soviet Union supported the North, the U.S. supported the South. North Korea launched a surprise attack on the South in June 1952, and Truman fired General MacArthur for criticizing the war. This was a pretty big deal that this, this general wanted more a larger scale war, and Truman wanted a smaller scale war, so he fires this dude, MacArthur. Look how high those pants are. That's got to be above his belly button, right? Got those pleats going too. Look at him. So the war was fought without congressional approval. This would be something that we'll see in the future. And for the first time, desegregated units. African Americans and whites are fighting alongside each other. The war finally ends with Eisenhower's administration. I do have a video on the Korean War and pretty much everything you can think of in this chapter. So check out the description. Lots of goodies for you there. All right, so we have the Munich analogy. There is this fear of appearing Russian, of appeasing Russian leaders was a powerful motive for U.S. presidents. Many presidents feared if we give in or appease these Russian leaders, it's going to be Munich all over again with Hitler. Okay, so let's talk about Cold War liberalism. This is the preservation of New Deal programs as well as a containment policy. This becomes a popular program during this time. Many union members went on strike post-World War II, so Congress responds with the Taft-Hartley Act, and this outlawed the closed shop requiring only the hiring of union members and allowed right-to-work laws, which stated that non-union members could work in union jobs. This was passed over Truman's veto. This was passed by Republicans. Truman was a Democrat. In the 1948 election, oh, I got a video on this as well, as well as the Taft-Hartley Act, Democratic Party was split. Strom Thurmond was, was running in the South under the Dixiecrat Party on a segregationist platform. And Harry Truman defeats Dewey in an upset, even though the very famous Chicago Tribune picture says Dewey defeats Truman. So Truman institutes his program known as the Fair Deal. This proposed national health care, money for education, increased social security, money and raising the minimum wage his biggest success came in social security and raising the minimum wage many people were against national health care health insurance back then and most of his proposals were rejected as except for as i said raising the minimum wage and more social security money all right, let's talk about the Red Scare. I got a video on this bad boy, too. Some government employees and aides to FDR provided the Soviet Union with information. So Executive Order 9835 stated that government employees could be investigated for subversive activities. And HUAC was established. This was a House of Un-American Activities Committee. Do not think that McCarthy was a part of HUAC. McCarthy, which we'll talk about in a second, was in the Senate. Therefore, he cannot be on a House committee. Richard Nixon was a prominent member of this, and they held public hearings on suspected communists, including Hollywood actors known as the Hollywood Ten. They were called before Congress and asked about their political beliefs. Alger Hiss was a former aide to FDR. He was convicted of perjury, and he was sentenced to five years in jail for lying, not for spying, but for lying. McCarthyism, Joseph McCarthy, accused over 200 government officials of being Communist Party members. They tended to be members of the Democratic Party, and he was a Republican. And eventually, his downfall came when he attacked the U.S. military on TV, and he was seen as a bully, and he died a short time later. All right, modern Republicanism is moderating New Deal programs. This was Eisenhower or Ike's administration. He was a moderate. In America under Eisenhower, we have the New Look defense policy, which is increasing military buildup through things like the hydrogen bomb and B-52 bombers. So it was basically this idea of really making the military more powerful. And that he also had a, a policy that was massive retaliation, that the U.S. would respond with more force if attacked. I like to think of this as the Ron Burgundy, that escalated quickly response, that if I do something to you, you're going to come back and just go re make it 100 times worse than what I came at you with. So if I bomb an airbase of yours, you may come back and nuke my entire country. That is the idea of massive retaliation. All right, revolutions in the third world and third world countries were often regarded as pawns of the Soviet Union. There's lots of revolutions going on during this time, so there's fear that these countries might align themselves with the Soviet Union. So the U.S. establishes the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, or CEDO. It is basically a, a NATO for Asia. And Truman and Eisenhower sometimes supported repressive governments as long as they were anti-communist. So we didn't always su support the best leaders. Democratic leaders, as long as they were not communists, that was a prerequisite, prerequisite for support from the U.S. Now, the CIA overthrew this dude, Mohammed Mosaddegh, 
in Iran who was elected and they instilled the Shah of Iran, which will lead to the Iranian Revolution in 1979. And also Jacob Arbenz Guzman in Guatemala, he began nationalizing or taking over some land that belonged to foreign countries and the CIA helped overthrow him. It's called the Banana Wars because it was fought over the United Fruit Company. All right, we have Vietnam. The beginnings really began in the 1950s for the U.S. Vietnam was once a French colony. Ho Chi Minh, who was a communist, sought to unite Vietnam. And in 1954, the French are defeated at Dien Bien Phu, and they leave Vietnam. And the U.S. is concerned because, hey, if nobody's there to support South Vietnam, they may turn communist. If you've ever listened to the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire, he says Dien Bien Phu Falls. That's what he's referring to. Dien Bien Phu Falls, Rock Around the Clock, Einstein, James Dean, Brooklyn's Got a Winning Team, Davy Crack and Peter Pan, Elvis Presley, Disneyland, Bardo, Budapest, Alabama, Cruise, Jeff, Princess Grace, Peyton Place, Trouble in the Suez. I got it all. All right, Middle East. The U.S. recognized... Israel almost immediately when it was created, and Egyptian President Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, which really upset Britain and France. They attacked Egypt, and Eisenhower eventually helped end the conflict because he was afraid that Egypt would turn to the Soviet Union for help. Eisenhower establishes the Eisenhower Doctrine, which states that the U.S. would help countries in the Middle East that resisted communism. All right, JFK, we'll finish up with the election of 1960. JFK, there are four debates between JFK and Nixon. If you were watching, you would say that JFK won. If you listened on the radio, you would say that Nixon won. JFK won in a really close election. Nixon on TV did not come across very confidently. He was sweaty, he was clammy, and he didn't have TV makeup on him. He really did not look as confident or charismatic as JFK. The New Frontiers, JFK's program, this called for advancements in science and Americans to achieve their fullest. Then we have crises in Cuba and Berlin. Fidel Castro overthrew Batista, the leader of Cuba, in 1959. This leads to the Bay of Pigs invasion, Dylan, Berlin, Bay of Pigs invasion, Lawrence of Arabia, British Beatlemania, more Billy Joel for you, sorry. This was a CIA operation to try to overthrow Castro in 1961, and this was a huge failure. And Khrushchev began construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961 to keep East Berliners from fleeing. So we had the Berlin Wall in the 1960s. On October 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis really occurs for about 13 days. This is the closest the two sides ever came to war. And as a result, the U.S. agreed to remove missiles from Turkey. And in exchange, the, US promised to re the USSR promised to remove missiles from Cuba. I have a much more detailed video on Cuba and the Cold War. Check it out in the description. All right, the Peace Corps was established. This was a two-year commitment by Americans to volunteer in third world regions to do things like teaching and pr improve social and economic development. This hoped to promote American America and democracy throughout the world. In 1957, we have the launch of Sputnik, a satellite by the USSR. And on April 12, 1961, we have Yuri Gagarin, who was the first person to orbit the the earth in space april 12th 1961 oh my god happy birthday henry clay can you believe it this dude is in chapter 25 this is insane all right this led to a huge increase in spending by the u.s government on science and education in the united states jfk began to increase military aid to south vietnam and he sent special forces train that trained south vietnamese troops and we'll talk more about vietnam in the coming chapters South Vietnam was led by Diem, a very corrupt leader. By Henry Clay. All right, quick recap. Truman Doctrine, Marshall Plan, Know It, Berlin Airlift, NATO, the Korean War causes, effects of that, 1948 election, McCarthyism and the Second Red Scare. Holy cow, know those two as well. The Cold War and Eisenhower, what were different policies he had, both foreign and domestic. The election of 1960, why was that important? And Cuba in the context of the Cold War, absolutely know that as well. And don't forget our, about our boy, Henry Clay. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you right back here in Chapter 26, and we'll figure out what are all these red lines on the map of America, and what does that have to do with Chapter 26? Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.